Welcome to Word Wednesday with CCF Makati. Searching for all who will worship in spirit and in truth. And he's discerning the thoughts and the yearnings of every heart in this room. So let us determine that right at the start, we will worship the Father with all of our Lift 
CCF Makati, welcome to Word Wednesday. You know what? We're so glad that you can join us for a time of learning. Now, since you're already here, I might as well welcome you. If this is your first time, you haven't joined us before, this is your absolute first exposure to CCF Makati, welcome. We would like to get to know you more. 
at the comment section. So it's that little button down there. Just click comment and type in first. And one of our volunteers will get in touch with you to welcome you to our family. And we understand that, you know what, it's awesome to watch on screen, get some spiritual food. But if you need prayer and counseling, you may sign up on the link at the comment section. Or if you're already available tonight, wag na patagalin pa. Join us at the Zoom breakout after the program. We have volunteers ready to pray for you and to listen to you. For the latest updates, you may regularly check CCF Makati's Facebook page. Now, it's my privilege to introduce you to our sharer for tonight. He is one of CCF Makati's Council of Servants, or COS, Brother Gino Rodriguez. Let's give him a warm round of applause from our homes. Good evening and welcome to Word Wednesdays. So tonight we continue our series about true love and the topic this evening is true love goes extra, meaning true love goes the extra mile or true love goes beyond what the world expects. So tonight we're going to be looking at the book of 1 John and um, 1 John was primarily written to address a group of people spreading a pagan belief called Gnosticism. And this belief was infiltrating uh, the early church. And John, in his letter to the early church, stressed that one important way to differentiate a true believer from a false believer uh, was love. So, in his earlier writings, in the Gospel of John, chapter 13, verse 35, he says, By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. And our passage for today, also written by the Apostle John, is in 1 John 3, 16 to 18, which reads, By this we know love, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our, life, our lives for the brothers. And if anyone has the world's goods and sees his brother in need, yet closes his heart against him, how does God's love abide in him? Little children, let us not love in word or talk, but in deed and in truth. And our brother Edric, in his uh, message last Sunday, outlined this passage by, define, by defining three ways uh, true love goes extra. And first he said, the first point was that Love, true love, is extra costly. Repeating 1 John 3.16, it says, By this we know love, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brothers. See, true love will cost us something. So husbands, because we love our wives, we give up all the other women in the world. Wives, because we love our husbands, we choose them over any other man in the world. That We give up the rest. And because you love your children, some of you may have to give up your time, may have to give up your hobbies, may have to give up something of yourself because of that love. And if we truly love Christ, we will be willing to give up our entire lives, pick up our, uh, pick up our cross, and follow Him just as Christ laid down his life for us because of love. So true love will often cost us something. It often requires sacrifice. In our couples group last week, we reviewed a common passage um, that's usually discussed in couples groups. And it's a, a passage of scripture in Ephesians that has to do with our household relationships. In Ephesians 5.21, it says, Submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ. So we are told to submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. And then it goes on to talk about wives submitting to husbands, about husbands loving, your, loving their wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. It talks about children obeying parents and how parents must discipline and instruct their children, which is also something that takes um, a lot of intentionality and work. And, you know, we are called to treat each other with humility, putting others before ourselves, submitting to one another. See, true love will lead us 
to sacrifice our ego. It will lead us to sacrifice our pride, our time, and true love will give up self. True love will always cost us something. It often involves sacrifice. So the question is, what do you need to give up to love others? So the second way we were instructed to love extra is in our giving. We are called to be extra giving. So love is true love is extra costly and true love is extra giving. First John 3.17, I'll read it again. It says, But if anyone has the world's goods and sees his brother in need, yet closes his heart against him, how does God's love abide in him? See, generosity is a good way to test our love and trust in the Lord. In verse 17, it said the word here, used of money or, or possessions, is quote-unquote the world's goods. See, earlier in the letter, um, in chapter 2, verse 15 of 1 John, he wrote, Do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in them. And if we are stingy with the world's goods, with our money, with our possession, that shows that we love these worldly goods more than God. And if we do that, how can we, if we are stingy with our possessions, with that which God has given us, how can we say that we love Him? 2 Corinthians 9, verses 6 to 8 says, The point is this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each one must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound to you, so that having all sufficiency in all things at all times, you may abound in every good work. So God does not expect us to be generous with what we don't have, but He expects us to be extra giving in what He has given to us. He is the true owner of everything. And if our minds and our hearts are set on things above, if our hearts and minds are set on eternal things, as the Lord has instructed us, then the world's goods won't matter as much to us. And we will be willing to give it away. And we will be willing um, to be generous. So if we sow bountifully, God promises that we will also reap bountifully. But there's also a warning. If we sow sparingly, we will also reap sparingly. So, we need to, true love is extra giving. Giving away the, the, these worldly goods that we have uh, because of love. So, question is now for all of us, how is your heart towards giving? So, we learned that love, true love is extra costly. It is extra giving. And third is, it is extra expressive. 1 John chapter 3, verse 18 says, Little children, let us not love in word or talk, but in deed and in truth. See, Christ's love translates to action. John is saying we should go beyond showing love with our words. We should do so through our actions, what we do. Claiming to love is not enough. Saying it is not enough, we must show it. Luke chapter 6, verses 27 to 28 says, But I say to you who hear, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. And pray for those who abuse you. See, Jesus spoke about loving enemies. But he didn't just say, tell them that you love them. Make them feel good with your words. He said, show it by blessing them. By praying for them. By doing good to them. By sharing, sharing your possessions with them. So we are to love, not just in word, but in deed. And in fact, not just in deed, because verse 18 says, we must love in deed and in truth. Romans 5 verse 8 says, But God demonstrates His own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, 
Christ died for us. Jesus just didn't say he loved us. He showed us. He demonstrated it for us by dying on the cross. And this verse, Romans 5, 8, also says that Jesus died while we were still sinners. Jesus died because the truth is we are sinners who are incapable of saving ourselves. And as sinners, we need forgiveness. And we are helpless to save ourselves, so we need a Savior. And just as Jesus showed his love for us in accordance to truth, we must love others according to God's truth, which is God's word. Not according to how we want to love, or how the world defines love, or what's right in our opinion. We need to love others in deed and also in truth, which is according to God's word. See, some people say that sex is an expression of love. But the truth of God's word says that it, is, it ought to be confined in the bounds of marriage. So we cannot just love indeed in what we think is right. We must also love in truth according to the scriptures. So John was telling the early church believers to love one another, to differentiate them from the Gnostics. But I also believe that John was telling the believers to be loving towards others, to win over the Gnostics. So instead of convincing the Gnostics to follow Jesus through their words, John encouraged the Christian or, or the Christians or the church to show them love, show them the love of Christ in truth and in deed. So the question now is for all of us, how can you improve in loving in truth and loving in deed? So with that, I'd like to close us all in prayer as you discuss these questions uh, with your group. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we'd like to thank you that before we even thought about loving extra, you loved us to the max, extraordinarily, beyond measure. And we thank you for that. We thank you, Lord God, that you have taught us through your word what true love looks like, that true love involves a cost that involves sacrifice you've taught us that true love involves uh, being generous being giving with what you've given us and you've taught us that true love is expressive that it's not just done in words but in deed and in truth oh lord would you help us put these things into practice and would you guide us in our d group discussions that and would you bring to our minds the ways that we can improve in these areas would you just be with us this evening um, help us learn from each other as we learn from you, your word and your spirit. All this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for joining us here at Word Wednesday. If you are meeting with your D group tonight, here are the suggested breakout questions. We will pause while you take a screenshot. For those availing of a Zoom breakout room for their D group, kindly take note of the Zoom details or take a photo of the QR code on screen. Zoom rooms will be open till 10 p.m. If you haven't signed up for a breakout room, please let us know in the comments and we'd be glad to assist you. If you're with us for the first time, would like to be prayed over, or in need of counseling, please take note of the link or take a photo of the QR code on screen. Our volunteers would be glad to serve you. Once again, thank you for joining Word Wednesday. We hope to see you again next week right here at 6.30 p.m. Have a blessed evening.